a the group of the university I'm also a member of, but I'm not in the picture. It is which it was taken before. Um, does in the research on on free software engineering approaches on and how they uh, try to study what free software does and how can it apply to other uh, other things that are not free software, especially looking at uh, uh, like uh, uh, how volunteer activity in, in open source project works and uh, how uh, how do they manage to get things done and what are the results, What uh, how is quality in that? I think I'll probably have to get an after for yeah. And they get uh, European founded pro uh, projects in order to do this kind of uh, quality analysis of open source stuff and one of the things they've done and um, they were uh, known of a few years ago was uh, starting a, a study on counting Debian releases so getting uh, statistics about Debian releases so this talk is about that so basically uh, and this is one of the uh, things I introduced in the talk that was not initially in the presentation so it's about some lies and lies and some statistics uh, there's also some nice graphs there on the presentation. Uh, actually, people that went to DevCon 5, I don't know how many of here went to this talk. Uh, I think uh, the people at the university gave the same talk about uh, uh, Sarge, I believe. Was it Sarge? Yes, I think yeah, it was Sarge. Yes. Uh, so it's kind of the same talk updated for it with some trends, comparisons between Sarge and it, uh, but uh, you know, fresh data from it. And uh, it tries to give an overview of how uh, Debian has grown uh, into it and uh, maybe uh, drop some questions in there if that is sustainable or not. Um, well, I'm going to introduce myself. Uh, for those that don't know me, um, Javier Fernandez Sanguino, so it's a very long name. It's right here next to the other long name there, so this one. Uh, I'm working at the university as an assistant professor, so that's why they induced me to give this talk. Uh, but I've been okay. having the level for over eight years now, I think, nine. So what summary for this yeah. talk? Um, I'm going to show you some information that they've uh, uh, gotten about uh, Debian uh, X, the latest release, uh, with uh, lines of code, uh, different, uh, how, well, I'm actually going to introduce how the, how they uh, do this, uh, this stuff and, and how they produce these numbers because there's some uh, things that have to be taken into account with the methodology they use. It has some caveats, so, so you have to know them before you start going, uh, telling me the numbers are lies, even though I already said they're going to be lies. Uh, so, uh, some information about the release, uh, lines of code in the release, a distribution of use of, of programming languages in the release with some things that might be uh, uh, new to to the people uh, that have been working with Debian for quite a long time. Uh, our packages, which packages are the most, the biggest ones in distribution. Also, th there's a very nice uh, information on, um, based on the Pocomo model that tries to model uh, how much time, given source uh, uh, lines of code, uh, how much time would uh, somebody take to do that a project if he were to do it from scratch. Okay. So we'll, we'll see that too. We'll see some comparisons with other operating systems, some previous releases of Debian, and we also will see uh, what are the things that uh, uh, this group, research group, is going to do in order to uh, keep researching how Debian has evolved through time. Okay. So I'm going to skip this one. This is intended for a, a more general audience. You all know what Debian is. So uh, uh, one of the main things is that. Uh, even though they're, they're uh, analyzing the release, they're also taking into account maybe uh, things that have not been released yet, uh, but are available in source code, including the new kernels that might be released in, in Lenny. Um, so, but for the purposes of the research they do, even though we're working with four different uh, distributions, uh, stable testing and stable and, and uh, experimental, they only focus, uh, well, we only focus, I don't know whether it's they or we, in this presentation, uh, on the stable release, so there's no data on the on how testing and stable uh, is 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 going forward. 
uh, actually Enrico Sini was asking me uh, if we could get numbers for the next release so we could add that data that uh, as information uh, to the packages so somebody could say uh, give me information about the packages that are over maybe a hundred thousand lines of code and see which are those and try to distinguish maybe packages between uh, those that are big ones and uh, those that are small or maybe those that are programmed in Java or those that are programmed mainly in C or C++. Uh, so we might uh, do some analysis later uh, for testing, not for this presentation but for what might be available in the future. Um, so the methodology uh, uh, the group uses to do this analysis is basically take all the archive and pack it and run uh, analysis tools over it with some um, things that have to be done in addition in order to get meaningful results, like uh, trying to distinguish which packages provide the same thing that some of the packages that, but maybe slightly different, so maybe different versions of the same program, like GCC, which has, which we distribute uh, version uh, 2.95, 3.3, 3.4, 4.1, 4.2, uh, so maybe all these um, uh, different versions of essentially the same software do not get counted four times, which might make uh, uh, might uh, make um, somebody think that Debian is bigger than it actually is because it's, uh, all those versions are essentially the same software, a different version of the same software. So there's some work done on not just unloading running tools, but after the tools are run, trying to distinguish which packages are providing the same software and try to only count uh, one of them and not all of them. Okay, and after that uh, is being run through all the archive, uh, well, you get a result. And the result is the physical sort lines of code uh, for all the software in the distribution and all the different packages and, 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 and in a given version. It's physical and it's not logical because the tool used, which is David Wood's slot count, uh, cannot uh, get uh, logical lines of code, you can only get physical lines of code. So for somebody, if somebody in C uh, has you know, uh, done a very large line, which is actually different, many 10 lines of code, but in, only in one single line, physical line, uh, they only get kind of counted one, okay? because that's the limitation of tools being used. Uh, also using uh, slot count, uh, we will try to identify different programming languages per package, so and also get information about which packages use which programming languages, maybe get a, get an overview of which of how many la programming languages are given are taken on on average on on the different uh, packages available, and also try, as I said before, to identify uh, files that might be the same across packages. Uh, Slot kind also provides this, and this is also done to get uh, some uh, basic uh, information on what would uh, Debian or the software that is written in Debian cost if you did, uh, if you develop it using uh, traditional you know, techniques, software engineering techniques. So there's a mission with this approach, basically, uh, and this is something that is due to maybe in Debian, uh, we don't package uh, software the same way, so people uh, tend to develop their own tools to package software, so you get things like Yara and CDBS, which kind of hinder this, uh, this uh, mm, uh, automatic analysis of tools. It actually even, I even had issues with them when I tried to do security audits with some other tools that were working. We talk about this, uh, I think, last year at, in Mexico. Uh, if you're using uh, automatic tools and you get into packages that, it, that are, you, it's not easy to unpack them and get to the real source code, uh, well, you're not going to get uh, those packages properly analyzed. Um, how the, how, this is solved in, in this count, and you'll see there's some issues here, is by trying to find uh, binary files within the binary source, within the source package, just trying to find binary files and uncompress them unconditionally. So you find, if you get a, a Debian package, Debian source package, um, that within it has a tar T G C file, then I compress that and keep uh, analyzing the data from, from the known works. Uh, there's the issue which has to be handled manually, uh, based on the data uh, obtained, that some packages are actually the same but different versions. Okay, uh, some package, some software is uh, reused in many packages. So, like maybe libraries instead of being used um, 
uh, in an external library, it has been embedded in the packages. I think that this happens rather commonly, and I remember at least one instance of the uh, media uh, decoders uh, uh, that the libraries like FFMPEG, is that right? It's actually included in many uh, different players, uh, video players, instead of having a library for that. So that source code is replicated as duplicated actually in many, in many different pieces. And uh, if you don't scrap that out, it's going to be counted like in four or five different times, even if it's the same code. And also, uh, there's some issues found in stuff, and you'll see why. Because of the way we distribute packages, some of us distribute packages. I'm, I'm here one to play because I actually have one package in this data, which I believe is the one that is scheduled to be uh, killed in the, for the next release. But uh, CDBS <coughs> might remain. But um, when you have patches within patches, it's difficult to uh, determine how to get the real uh, lines of code. And uh, we essentially do not do it a single way, so they have to develop different scripts to talk for all this stuff. So you'll see this is the size of Debian Edge. So that's the, those are the numbers, the final numbers based on all the packages. So that's uh, 260 million source lines of code. Only taking into account of screen, upstream packages, so only taking the, the upstream uh, source code. If you take into account the Debian source code, that's, that goes 23 million source, uh, source lines of code more to the upstream. That's not actually all patches introduced by Debian. That's also uh, takes into account software we see, which is only distributed by Debian. Okay, so that, that is the source code of the patches introduced by Debian and the source code of the software that are the, of the of the software that is only available in Debian, like maybe DPKG, uh, DI, or ABT. So that is included. And when you scrap out the Debian directory, well, the account you get for source uh, uh, lines of code is that uh, 17 uh, million source source lines of code. Okay, that that might be. Uh, uh, it has not been investigated yet. Uh, why is this increase, if this is due to patches, maybe uh, <coughs> like uh, some source code has been heavily patched, and it, that includes a lot of source lines of code. I remember Chrome, which I maintain is there's like from the upstream, is there's a hundred revisions made by the Debian package, so that introduces a lot of code, so that's a lot of lines of code. Uh, or maybe that's based on, uh, uh, maybe that's because of the different uh, uh, packages which are only Debian specific. That has not been yet uh, designed, okay. Um, so, one question for the audience. What do you believe in Debian X? Because this, is, this has changed from Sarge. Are the five most used programming languages? So, we get the C. C, well, that's, <laughs> that's easy. C++. That has been for a long time. C++. Perl. Perl. Python. 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 That's not one of the five most used. Shell. You have one left. What? Make five? No. <coughs> Java. <laughs> so those are the counting the different program languages per package and summing them up. That's the distribution of language uh, program languages in, in Debian. There's a very interesting thing and uh, which has changed a lot here from Sarge, and that's Java. Which has jumped was way down line, has jumped it has duplicated the number of lines of code from Sarge to to Edge, and it's way over uh, it's over Perl, over Python. Which one would think that it has been uh, there's been uh, there has been a lot of development in Python recently. Many people have uh, did Perl and started writing just coding Python, but the one that has uh, jumped most was uh, has been Java. Are there conclusions you would like us to draw about the efficiency of writing in the languages? <laughs> 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 well, there's no, uh, there's one interesting thing that is measurement of of, of source uh, of the mean of source lines of code per package. That could be interesting to uh, to determine if that's more higher in Java programs than in C or C plus plus programs. But uh, uh, that that could be done later. But. Uh, that's not be that. So I don't know if that's only two, uh, three or four packages. Actually, uh, one one package that, that contributes a lot of that. I think it's Open Office, which has a lot of Java stuff. How much Java. does Eclipse count for? I don't know. But we can look. We have all the data there. If you want to, those questions we have, we can solve them really easily. 
Uh, there's some, I don't know, there's some there, there. we can find there are in GCC, there would you like to look, I, I can give you the list of packages that are in, packages are specific because they don't build anywhere but x86 because I'm using a set of I, I remember this, John, for example, John the Reaper, uh, the cracker of passwords has assembly code inside. There's a lot of libraries that have a similar optimized routines for popular architectures. Mm -hmm. Also, CPU, BPH. BPH. Yeah, mm -hmm. I remember that. Things actually can't pass the So, like, PHP, for example, is not, is not that high up in the list. And that, and that one is kind of surprising. And TCO has been dropping for a while. Uh, one of the meaningful things here is that if you take this distribution, that's the distribution of programming languages for, for uh, Edge, uh, and you compare it with that source. Okay? Yeah. That's ours. You can see that C and C++, well, C++ is going up, C is going down, okay, Java has jumped way up and has displayed Python and Perl, and Lisp, Lisp has gone way down, actually. It's, it's, it's not, it, it is not any longer in the five most used programming languages and packages, okay? If you want more detail on the data, all this is available, so you can uh, play with all of that if you want to. So Lisp not only dropped out of the top five, yeah. it actually dropped, it was above Pro before and dropped below? It dropped below, <coughs> it's on number six, I believe. Five, six, six, six. So it dropped from four to six? Yeah. So, so that dropped from uh, two per, uh, was 3% to 70%. Mm -hmm. Actually, the, that's the distribution. The number of lines of code has grown. So that doesn't yeah. mean that the lines of code is, uh, is okay. less code than it was in, 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 in search. That's why it might be the same point, even, even more code. But there's much more code introducing in Edge uh, with no Java and C, C++ on this. There's a bias in some of these statistics and you will see now. So, uh, as I said, ANSI C is being used uh, less, C++ and Java are uh, being used uh, much more. Uh, Java specifically has increased a lot. So I believe the Stephen security team has started learning Java. <laughs> Because that's uh, they're going. To, that, if that it has increased a lot, it probably will increase as soon. Because I, I believe we didn't release Edge with uh, with uh, GDK, right? With uh, well, I'm not, I'm not this uh, sans official GDK, but that will be a thing solved for Lenny, and that will make us get more, even more Java stuff into the archive. Good. So, what do you believe are the two largest packages in? Debian. Open Office. Open Office, that's a good one. And the second one? KDBase. No. Kitty4? Mozilla Browser. That's too many questions. That's too many questions. Mozilla Browser. Eclipse? No. No. I thought it was internal. Yeah, that's a good one. That's, I mean, that was easy. I thought you were saying the kernel first. No. It takes longer to build Mozilla. It takes to build Mozilla. <laughs> so yeah, you see, you see, well, I drew some lines all over there, clips also over there, and uh, that one is one of the things I've, I've, I've uh, reviewed the presentation. I've noticed that it's it is one of the things that have been have biased probably this piece a little bit is that <laughs> this has been counted. <laughs> yeah. Miguel, you're responsible for this <laughs> because of course not anymore. <laughs> you're still in the upload for this one. So uh, that package, actually, I was really surprised when I saw this or when reviewing the presentation. That's one of the things that that has uh, made the uh, well, it kind of biases the all uh, some of data. So we have probably have to review it without it. Uh, and it's uh, when when Juan Jose was developing his data. Uh, uh, finalize it, well, he didn't take into account that this uh, packaging includes a lot of libraries, compilers, debuggers, which are actually, well, the GCC includes all the libraries, so the tools took them, took that package, unpacked it, unpacked all the sources, and then hack. counted. It's a hack. It's <laughs> so a that 230 megabyte source. package was counted as, as uh, unique, when it's actually the rehashing of many different packages. So that probably has to be stripped out and removed and, and, and taken into account, yeah. taken out of the list. Uh, you see, for example, that in the list, uh, GCC different versions are actually the same size, but they have been removed to only try to count GCC once. But actually, it's being counted twice because it's inside number three. <laughs> well, actually, it's being counted uh, 
five fold mm -hmm. because I think that number three includes I GCC so. three dot three, GCC four dot one, and GCC four dot two. I swear we'll try and get rid of that. One. <laughs> The thing that's not on here is I think I32 lives as GTK because it was too buggy to be included. <laughs> so uh, actually, uh, I added here uh, if you, the top 10 packages are uh, basically, if you take the list or you even take top 100, are basically uh, either development tools or end user software. So that's uh, Mozilla or, or Ice Weasel, Ice Top, and, and Evolution are on the top 100 uh, packages, so those are the biggest software we have. Uh, K3BSD was on the list, but II32 leaves put it down. Uh, if you, it's number 11, so it's actually number 10. So it should be over the list of two. Yes? What was VNC exactly? I thought it was supposed to be so famous for its simplicity. Which one? VNC 4 was in the list. I really don't know, but it's really big. And it's big, and it, was, it was in the top 10. It was in the top 10. Oh, it's not in the top 10. Because it could be copies the X sources. Yeah. Does it? Yeah, it provides an X source. I'm buggy well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I have a question why we're, you know, man, the KE desktop and such environment went in the list. Because they also have package that has a package other as a Yeah, but the, um, well, actually, one of the They're things that is not on the list that was on the list in charge is X. And yeah. now X has been split a lot, yeah. so it's not longer on the list. It was it's always not, on the, on the top 10 list. Yeah. Yeah. So this is because of the packaging? No, no else is a number of discrete units that are distributed as target upstream, and so it's yeah. KDE. So none of those individually. Yeah, if you probably sum up all the environment, it might get in the list, but if you sum up the individual option sources, they don't. I mean, so, I, so product is not li is, is not listed as product, is it listed as packages? That's correct. Uh, upstream that's okay. upstream okay. tarballs, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Those and are upstream if you, if you look at some of the things on this list, VNC4 is on the list because it includes a copy of the X server. And yeah. if it were broken out so that it didn't need to duplicate that source, it would not be on the list. Eclipse includes a full copy of SWT GTK that it distributes as part okay. of the Eclipse source. Yeah. So if that were now it needed to be distributed as part of Eclipse, that would be that. So one of the things I have to uh, that that uh, it's on, on further work here is actually trying to uh, get more precise on how what the code reviews is being done. So that actually could help a lot uh, to try to clean I mean, the archive. Maybe some of the packages were just done. Yeah. Uh, actually, but what is interesting here is that um, if you take into account the top 100 packages we had on list, that's a big, bigger list. Uh, it used to be in in in. 2.0 that used to be about 65 percent of the distribution uh, of the source uh, li lines of code, and even if you, with these packages that are being counted, uh, you know, twice, three times, uh, the top 100 list of packages is only 34 percent, and it's always going down. That's because most of the archive is composed of very small packages, so they we get more uh, packages in the release, and they're very small, and that uh, so that increases the overall uh, lines of code, but. Uh, Top 10 remains the same, but they're not uh, contributing that much to the overall count. You see that later on. Is that's, uh, this is the uh, logarithmic scale for all the package size. Uh, you have a uh, few packages on, on, this, on this side, you know, with over 100,000 lines of code. Uh, and you get a lot of packages which are, well, this is logarithm, so that's the sum. And the average is over here. That's the average size of our package in the archives, so 28,000 source lines of code. And that's, that count, if you, if you, uh, they, this has been done already for all the releases. It has not changed much between releases. So the average package in the release is about 20,000, 30,000 uh, uh, 30, lines of code, consistently from potato to uh, edge. So there are very big packages, but there is also a lot of, lot of small packages. OK. So this is a nice question, and you cannot get the answer right for this one. <laughs> so there are monkeys in here, isn't it? Sorry? Monkeys and cockroaches. Yeah, yeah, monkeys writing code. Or copying code. <laughs> expensive monkeys. Expensive monkeys. So this is standard commercial methodology, right? Yes, he's writing code. Yeah, that's the standard. <laughs> so if, if you use a common model, that's a standard used for uh, classical engineering, and that's a uh, Uses reference, and that's what the papers, uh, the 
we take this data, we publish a paper saying this is what uh, Debian is worth. So what we tell the media, <laughs> you know, technical papers, is that Debian 4.0 is worth uh, uh, six dollars, six point seven billion USD or so five thousand million uh, euros, based on the source lines we code. Okay. So if you took, if you, so it would take, it would take nine years to develop. If we not uh, Debian, all the Oh, not obviously this does not include all only the things we've done in Debian. This includes all upstream. So if you, took, if you try to develop all the operating system you have there, it will take nine years. It will cost you that much. So that's like one and a half times the current market capitalization of Red Hat for comparison. I like the schedule. The time is nearly nine years. How long has Debian been around? So we're about three years behind schedule. <laughs> <laughs> How many people will have to be involved in the nine <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have to divide actually the nine years by the person years to get the number of people you would need to develop. <laughs> so that's a very nice figure, actually. Yes. I'm actually feeling really good. <laughs> <laughs> We've never had 7340. How many people would be hired for nine years? Well, you divide the uh, 73,000 by nine. That's the number of people you need to develop. That's you see. I mean, uh, that's a very nice figure. That that might sound flashy, yeah. but that's okay. also that's also a way to show that those models are not a way good way to determine the cost of service. But okay, but, but these are the classically used. Is this really a lot? I mean, I think Google gives me that Microsoft could with this cash recreate the whole thing in Debian six times just with what they have. In cash. Yeah, but it would so take him nine years. I'm <laughs> <laughs> <Because, laughs> being damn rich, right? It's it's ex extremely extreme. expensive to sell a crappy product. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you need people well, to do that too. <laughs> <laughs> to give you a sense of scale, that seven uh, percent of HP's annual revenue last year. So again, it's so do you have to come in the complete market <laughs> capitalization? Do you, you have to come in the marketing, the sales, the, yeah. the, the, the deployment, oh, all the things that yeah, that's also it. Also, will add on top. Even well, you know, marketing is that. zero. <laughs> yeah. so but you say you will come one to three or one to five. It, it, depend, it depends the size of what you're doing in company. Also, so, <laughs> This is interesting, and this is a cool, <laughs> this is a comparison of Debian with other operating systems. Actually, the the uh, medium slice of source lines of code uh, for obviously um, non-free operating systems are not really known. Out there, just estimates. Uh, somebody just says uh, 30 million, or maybe somebody uh, within Microsoft says this is that many million source lines of code. But uh, the real, the good comparison is with other other uh, free operating systems like Fedora. You see over there. Uh, or open Solaris, which uh, also they have the, uh, in the group they haven't the, uh, done the analysis of that. And you can see that, uh, well, obviously compared to uh, um, non-free software, Debian is much bigger, but it's actually much bigger than other uh, free software projects also. But right? And these are the adjusted numbers that exclude duplicated code? No, but even if you divide by two, you get higher numbers. <laughs> I mean, you can divide, I mean, if you, if you get, uh, you say, uh, gross, uh, this is a gross estimated divided by two. You still, you still two times Fedora core, and Fedora core has been counted using the same methodology. So, I mean, it but can include Fedora, Fedora core only ships one copy of GCC. As yeah, as I know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's a feature of Debian that we ship four copies of GCC. <laughs> no, but the, the, those copies have been uh, scrapped off the numbers. They have. Yeah, okay. but not not when they're within I uh, thirty two. <laughs> but I mean, th those numbers are <coughs> trying to remove so packages hard. that have been. Actually, if you go to the list of the website, you will not find GCC 3.3 on the, on the list. Mm -hmm. okay, those have been removed, trying not to add up to the total amount. So actually, it's more lines of code in there. Yeah, yeah. duplicated lines and of code. It has kind of people have added, that has also added value that you have retracted from the whole numbers you present in the form of this. Yeah, but I mean, that's duplicated versions of the same yeah. thing. Yeah, this is the number I want to see because it gives a better idea of useful lines of code in there yeah. as opposed to raw lines of code. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's very subjective. <laughs> so you, you can see here one thing. I, you can see here one thing, and, and I can show you here. That's the uh, if you compare edge with other Debian releases. Even if you take into account this gross estimates, and there's things that have been counted twice, they have been counted twice in all releases. Uh, you you see that the growth of edge versus Ham is like 11 times uh, versus Woody is. Uh, almost three times and charge is only one uh, 1.2 times so it's not as big 
the very big uh, change uh, and that was introduced in that from five talk was from Woody to charge which actually duplicated the source nice code okay and uh, there's a question here uh, because the number of data developers does not grow as fast as the number of source lines of code. And that's actually uh, one of the nice graphs I had. I, uh, with the uh, growth of source lines of code packages, you'll see the packages, source packages, and source lines of code actually follow the same train. And that's because most of the packages are very simple packages uh, uh, that have a, you know, the, the 20,000, 30,000 source lines of code, so they grow the same. So uh, there's a big change probably in from there's actually a big change from Woody in Search, which is Open Office, I believe, was introduced in Search, right? Or was it introduced in Woody already? Open Office was first in Search. First in Search, I believe. Okay. That was when Search was first. Oh, first in Woody. We can see that. Okay, but um, used the backport for Woody, so uh, it was there. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, but you can see that even 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 if some of the top ten elements were introduced at that point, doesn't uh, you know there's there's no there's no growth there. But you can see the number of developers have. Uh, since the release is not growing that fast, so we have a lot of a uh, uh, lot of code, not many developers. So oh, who's going to have to maintain that scroll? Well, that's based on the vote. Oh, that, that 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 is based on the vote of the Debian developer elections, Debian leader elections. Is actually db.debian.org these maintainers which are not Rx active. Right. So there's two things that cause the shape of that line to change that I think are interesting. One is. It was after Woody that we first started calling oh, yeah. old and inactive maintainers. And so um, yeah. what's interesting is that horizontal line means that we have maintained or slightly increased the number of reasonably active developers, whereas prior to that, the slope of the line was just how many people had accreted the yeah. database yeah. over time. The second, the second interesting thing is it's after Woody that the concept of sponsored uploads really got started. And so there is more work being done by people that actually gets into the archive without somebody actually using it. One of the things that, uh, that uh, they're working a paper for is uh, doing an analysis of volunteer work on Debian based on Debian developed changes mainly, least, which might uh, be useful to determine not only who is uploading, but who is contributing, uh, who is actually the maintainer for the package. So and the numbers for maintainers are different. And uh, one of the things, nice things there, uh, is actually they uh, they can analyze the uh, the time it takes for somebody to enter Debian and to leave Debian, which is on average like six uh, six and a half years before they get burned out and they go. And they does, does, does that players. measure? Does that measure take into account when they enter the NM queue? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I want to see those numbers adjusted for how long the person spent. In the <laughs> I want an argument for, for shortening the NMQ time. Well, that could be done. Based on either making up loads while they're in an MQ that will include them. But uh, those that time is actually uh, it's based on data from uh, Cato to to I believe Sarge. I don't think Edge has been included then, and it is still being developed. But uh, there, um, one of the things they're going to do is more on the maintainer side. The other thing I'd like to see on this graph is. You talked about Debian developed changes. Another thing that can be mined out of that is the rate of frequency of uploads per package, which I would like to see how that compares with this, this increasing trend of number of raw packages in the archive. Does is where do we fall between these two lines in terms of how many uploads we see per package as a metric of how well individual packages are being maintained? Mm -hmm. Are they is it keeping pace, or do we have lots of packages in the archive because we're not cleaning out the ones that aren't maintained? Or one, of the, one, well, one of the of course, things the that was done. Ones the ones that don't have to need to be uploaded, right? <coughs> yeah, you have to. Let's not. Let's not. No. <laughs> Actually, one of the things that, uh, a there's a paper. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to in the reference. You will see the reference to where the papers are. There's some interesting paper. One uh, uh, that was the analysis done between Potato and Sarge of the archive of. Uh, versions of the packages, and there are actually uh, packages and versions we have which had not changed in Potato <coughs> from Sarge, which were exactly the same version, same package and version. And um, you can see which ones had changed and which ones had not, and which one had removed from the archive. But that's something that can be done. Uh, in any case, just to summarize up and end uh, the thing, uh, one of the things that uh, the, the we for Sanchez and, and we would like to do for X2 is an analysis of the authorship and licenses used by the archive. That's something that uh, there's a tool already done for that. 
So you can run it on the archive and get uh, how many uh, files are GPL licensed, GPL, GPL BC, BSD licensed, and how many, and who's the copyright owner for the files. So who's, is, is it the Free Software Foundation? Is it uh, Sun? Is it HP? Uh, is it, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's an individual developer? And that, ha that was done for search, and, ha and it's going to be updated for Edge. Okay, so that will be a, a future paper that I'm going to make. And um, uh, we're probably going to do analysis, more in-depth analysis. It was done for data to search. It will probably be updated for Edge to analyze how the distribution has evolved uh, and how is it really growing. And a couple of information from volunteer activity because one of the things that uh, uh, the uh, research group has been doing is taking information from mailing lists, uh, packets of loads, uh, CVS, SBN, and get that information in order for example to determine uh, who is the uh, project manager for a project based on mailing list activity uh, and packs of loads and who is uh, working on, on, on what specific uh, parts of code and, and whether uh, a release for some of that. This was that, uh, a study for genome, whether a release, uh, time release model is appropriate or not. And uh, if there's like one, one uh, when you have time release, if you work uh, all the time on the archive and then, you know, make a release or whether you do all the work at the end of the release. So that has been done for other projects, PSD, Genome, and will probably try to be done for Debian. With the caveat that in Debian we don't have a CVS, SVN, we can point people to analyze because it's all distributed and all, all we have is the package load information, which is, can be used, but that's not a full information. So that doesn't give you information on um, uh, maybe like you could get it to go to a lead off. Um, uh, if there's developer activity in between releases, or maybe if somebody goes, makes a lot of changes in one day, doesn't upload and forgets about the packet for a week, and, or for a week, for a month, and then goes next month, does a lot of changes, upload one, or, or whether he is working constantly on the package and then making a, a given upload at some point. Uh, so that is going to be done also, but it's not been done, okay? not been done already. Uh, so if you if you want, you can go to the this website, debiancounting.linux.s, uh, uh, which will be directly somewhere else, uh, which has all the data of all the releases up to edge. Okay, I think the only thing missing there is the graphs, which are not being generated right now for some of the releases. But that has all the information in this presentation and previous presentations of all the releases. Package information, uh, version information, you actually, I can show it to you guys here. Here. This is, for example, the information for Edge. So this is like the summary I gave you of all the information. And you have all, all the statistics per package. So you can go to package information and see OpenOffice, which is the first one. How many lines of code it has, of what, which languages. Uh, you see that Java is 7% of, of OpenOffice over there. Maybe other tips has a lot of Java there, which is basically Java, right? So you, you got all the information, both for Edge and all the other ones. So if you want to play with this data, it's all there um, available. Okay, I'm not trying to. So to end up, that's the number of source line code in Debian. That's the uh, coast. Uh, you will see that uh, those are the most used languages. And still, as compared to other distributions like uh, Fedora Core uh, or BSD, Debian still is even with this cross county methods, uh, you use biggest uh, free software, uh, free libre software compilation has been done. Okay, so uh, if you want more information, those are the tools that have been used, Lockhound basically with David Wheeler. That's the one that's going to be used with uh, copyright analysis. I think, I think the DPL mentioned at, uh, this morning that he wanted to do some analysis of what, of copyrights being used. Oh no, that wasn't the main list, right? Uh, uh, GPL uh, versus uh, version 3 versus GPL version 2 or newer, try to get that. There's a tool already to try to get that information, so that could be used. And there's some other tools over at that side. And all the papers are available also at that site. Uh, so you, get, you can get there all the papers on search and back, and when uh, new papers will publish with more information, they will be also available there. So that's all from my side, do you have any questions for me? I have a question, I wasn't sure yeah. from the beginning, so yeah. I don't know if it's been covered or not. Uh, you tried also to analyze the number of the users, or it's just the... No, that just, uh, <coughs> yes, software in the archive. Uh, there's other studies being done 
in order to try to get use the popcorn results to get some meaningful information from the packages, whether maintain packages are uploaded more frequently or that, but that given that popcorn doesn't represent all the users, there's no really actually there's no information that you can get from users right now. So this is only this is basically software available on the archive and on how much of it is and how distributed it is. Okay. Yeah. I think I've got a way to count the users. Um, what's the thing to put into sources like this when you install a new machine? Your app repositories, including security. So every machine out there is by default checking security.debian.org. Now, all those machines are downloading a full copy of the release file each time and then caching that locally. So with a little bit of magic to try and uh, dispel intermittent uh, squid proxies between end machines, and our security.living.org machines, which there are three, <coughs> all we need to do is count the number of full downloads of that file between updates of that file to be able to get a lower limit of the number of installed machines. So AJ and I had a look at this uh, last night, and for the first two weeks of Edge being out, um, there was no updates to the releases file. From one machine that was in the uh, pool of three machines, we estimate that total installs of Edge during the first two weeks was around 100,000 systems. Um, the longer that window between the releases file being updated, the more accurate it become. But also, we don't currently serve the magic headers you need to be able to dispel squid from, or, or any other proxy. Or NAT or whatever. Yeah. Well, NAT you can get around. If I'm not looking at source IP addresses, I'm looking at full downloads of that file. Okay. So multiple machines behind a NAT will each download a full copy of the releases mm -hmm. file, mm -hmm. but squid will cache that. Or any transparent proxy will do that also. Yeah. So but but squid, squid, proxies, squid proxies artificially deflate the figure rather than. They do currently, so it's a bare, it's a minimum, a lower yeah. threshold. But um, by adding certain headers, which I'm trying to see if I can convince people to do, um, we should be able to tell squid not to cache, but to force clients uh, to refetch that, even through the squid. Mm -hmm. Given that file's only 200 bytes or 100 bytes, that's not really going to be a big overhead to us. Um, mm -hmm. But we should be able to improve the accuracy of that number. How does that compare to the copyright content number? I haven't compared to that yet. It was only last night we looked at this, finally. I don't have access myself to the security logs, as you can imagine. Okay. Do you kind of do the same for older installations of data? Yep, we were just looking at Edge at that stage, but um, the main thing is that you've got to have a file which is being downloaded and not updated, forcing those clients to re-download that file, otherwise you start counting again from zero. That was just one machine, so you were No, I, I, I had tripled it for that, for the 100,000 in the first two weeks. Yes. Uh, rough, heuristic. So yeah. that's the only place I can think of. If anyone else can think of a, another way to count installs, please let me know. And that also does miss any machines that are installed without access to a network. Of course. Yeah, people do deploy. Yeah, it's just kind of what we see in Trotec that we have 100,000 downloads and then they distribute Q in, for instance, 1.7 uh, versions of KD installed in Brazil. So anything we do in counting at home kind mm. of is nothing. Mm. You're lost. So it, everything is wrong. Is this the same thing with DBM2 that you have older ways of having a centralized <coughs> repository as schools have in large installations? Yeah. And everything goes there? Mm -hmm. as, as probably Extremadura is uh, one of that example. Well, we, we have the own, their own pool, so. Yeah. And maybe horror uh, guys, I don't know. School links. Mm -hmm. Well, we have Colton, but it's a low number. Yeah. It's true about everybody having their own pools, but everybody's told them not to mirror security. Yeah. So we have a yeah, but they will. <laughs> they will, of course. Yeah. Again, it's still a lot of threshold, but yeah. <laughs> okay. So, any more questions? Then we're up. Next talk. Thank, Thank you very much. much.